thank you very much, Jakob, for that, <laughs> for that, for that introduction. I think the expectations are probably pretty high as well. So, this is the exact same down suit that I wore on the 5th of May in 99 when I summited Mount Everest. I thought that might be a good way to tie in to the topic of this specific TEDx, which is hide and seek. And no, I'm not wearing this to hide, at least not here and now, but one could actually say that I did wear it to hide when I was climbing. To hide from the harsh conditions that you find high up on the mountain. The cold wind, the deep snow, the thin air. Because you see, above 8,000 meters, there's only one third of the oxygen pressure compared to sea level. I mean, it's a very hostile environment. And this suit did a really good job in keeping me alive in what's called the death zone. Now, up there, well, I had another like four or five layers underneath it as well, each of them with the purpose of keeping my body warm and keeping my body functioning and protecting me from the outside environment. And up there, it really did help. It did fill a purpose. <laughs> Here, I'm getting really warm, <laughs> really fast, and it does not help at all. It actually does completely the opposite. And if I would wear this for too long, I would probably you now start feeling stressed, losing focus, concentration. Who knows, I might even faint, or even worse, I'm gonna forget what I'm gonna say, so hang on while I take it off. <laughs> I 
mean, I soon discovered when they took off their equipment, that they took off their layers, that they didn't look like any superhumans. I mean, they were men, women, uh, with dreams, with uh, strengths, but also with, you know, worries and weaknesses, but with aspirations, just like me. I mean, different, but still the same. And the truth is, uh, we all carry those kind of preconceptions of how we view people. Uh, you could call them layers in a way, but I think that the risk is that um, if we wear those layers too long, if we put them on other people too long, if we wear them ourselves too long, that it's going to take a lot longer to get rid of them. Now, I did not only become the first Swedish woman at the summit, I actually also became the first Czech woman. <laughs> I've dual citizenships, uh, which turned out to be very practical, one could say, uh, something I can really recommend, uh, because I actually took, <laughs> I took you know, two, two first spots or positions in one, uh, one attempt, so that was very efficient. Um, now, that came as a complete surprise that I did become actually the first Czech woman, because knowing the great Czech climbing uh, traditions, I just assumed that a Czech woman had already been on the summit, didn't do any real research. But it turned out that that was not the case, so that was, of course, a very pleasant surprise. Well, pleasant for me, at least. <laughs> not so much for the Czech climbing community and uh, some of the women. And they, of course, wondered who I was and where I had been hiding. So they invited me, the climbing association, uh, down to Prague. And I went and I met one of their representatives at the airport. And uh, we shook hands and he held on to my hands, both of them. And he looked at them and he said, okay, yeah, that looks okay. Good for you, it's lucky you that you don't have long nails or, you know, well manicured or polished nails, because then we would not have believed you. And at that moment, I really did feel lucky, <laughs> like that I didn't have the time that morning to fix my nails, because I really wanted him to believe me. And it took me 10 years before I started painting my nails again. And you might think, you know, it's not a big deal, it's just nails. But many times, those layers, they actually are big deals. They can be the difference between surviving or not. I think you all have heard about the saying, don't judge the book by the cover. And that is so true. Because to find out what those books in the bookshelves actually are, uh, what they can teach you, uh, you have to pick them out, you have to engage, and you have to open them, and you have to start reading. And I think that's really important, that you engage, that you explore, uh, because, um, I mean, it can be challenging, of course, many times, but I think that's necessary, that you dare to to discover and peel under those different layers. It's important to explore. And when I talk about explorations in that sense, I really don't think that it's about, you know, traveling across the world or crossing the oceans or to new countries. There's so much more to be explored and discovered. Um, important discoveries, even maybe life-changing discoveries, or even life-saving discoveries that we can do in our own backyard. Um, I often say that my journeys are not only trips out into the world, but very much journeys within. Because even if you do travel, which of course a lot of us do, um, or if you don't, it doesn't actually matter, because you're going to find yourself in new situations, new environments, new surroundings, new constellations, new peoples, and new relationships, but there's going to be one factor in that that will remain the same, and that will be you. And we so often are curious about other people, and learn about them, you know, their weaknesses or soft spots, but we're less eager to learn about ourselves. 
And I think to explore oneself is kind of basic, it's really fundamental. But over the years I've also discovered that that's something that really scares people. Because one of the most common questions that I get is actually this one. Weren't you afraid of being by yourself? Weren't you scared of spending so much time alone uh, by yourself? And uh, I think that's a pretty sad question because the one person that you will have a re relationship for the re entire life, for your whole life, I mean, that's going to be you. And don't you want to know that person better than anybody else? Most of the times that question comes up when I talk about my Around America adventure, an expedition where I circumnavigated the lower 48 states of the United States, kayaking and bicycling. It took me 439 days to complete. And of course, during those days, I did have company on some parts, but I also did spend a lot of time by myself. Valuable time, important time, sitting there and paddling on the ocean, I mean, there was very little to distract me, one you know, whale or an orca on occasions, but I had a lot of time to just allow those thoughts, those emotions to resurface and ask those basic but essential questions. Who am I? Where have I been? Where am I now? And where am I heading? Uh, or questions like, am I working with something I believe in? Am I living with someone I like? <laughs> I mean, sometimes those questions can be challenging and you might be, you know, uh, not always eager discovering that the answer might be, be challenging also, that you might actually have to do some changes. But I like challenges. Uh, and I think they're, again, they're essential that you dare to engage, that you dare to explore and that you dare to expose yourself in different ways because that is when you evolve that's when you learn i don't think anybody here is surprised that i know exactly what i need to bring when i'm going on an expedition what i need to pack in my backpack i need to know that i need to be able to use that equipment because it is a question about survival or failure it is a question about life or death. And you're not surprised that a company with any kind of self-preservation also needs to learn what they need to succeed. Uh, I mean, to know uh, what questions to ask or what materials to explore or actually even to expose the problems or the weaknesses. Any company with self-preservation has a research and development department, right? And why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we also have that kind of a department where we allow ourselves to discover those things, to really explore? But do it in a more, maybe, yeah, you don't have to call it the research and development department. I mean, hide and seek is <clears throat> pretty good because when you hide, you have to learn how to be careful. And when you seek, you have to know how to be bold and brave and challenging. And of course, you have to train to become good at that. Uh, and I do a lot of training. <laughs> I actually play hide and seek with my kids. Uh, they're really good at it. And uh, uh, <laughs> my youngest daughter, she's actually really funny. Uh, most of the times they're hiding in the house and I'm standing there counting. You know, it's like 18, 19, 20, and then I go, okay. Here I come, and you walk around, and I say, you know, where are you? And it takes like two seconds before my daughter jumps out and says, you know, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very liberating. And she doesn't know that yet, but it's also very, I mean, it's, it has courage to stand there and say, here I am. And we lose that somewhere along the way. We lose that courage, we lose that sense of exploration and, and curiosity. And I think if there's one idea that I have is that you actually should stamp, you should have business cards where you stamp explorers on it. You should not forget to always constantly explore and, and find what's underneath those layers.
And I'm just going to round up with um, one last uh, kind of situation that I find myself real often in. Uh, well, not that often, not equally often as I'm out uh, having talks. But sometimes me and my girlfriends, we go out, you know, have this all night girl out and uh, go to a nightclub and we hang in the bar. And uh, of course, these guys come up, uh, approach us and start chatting. And this, it happens uh, to me as well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it doesn't take too long before the guy starts asking, you know, what, so what is your profession? What do you do for a living? And uh, I've learned the hard way that it's not a very good idea to say that I'm in the adventure business two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of try and, and hide that a bit, one could say. So instead, I say that I'm you know, in the traveling business. <laughs> Uh, that I, you know, do travel, the kind of a consultant, but in a more outdoorsy, adventurous type, you know, like bicycling or paddling or hiking or climbing. And whenever I say climbing, you can actually see how they light up, <laughs> how they go, wow, yeah, you know, I love climbing. <laughs> it's such a, you know, you have to be strong and muscular and, you know, to be able to pull yourself up those indoors walls because, yeah, I did an indoor climbing uh, course uh, some time back and, yeah, but I really enjoyed it. It's so powerful and you have to be courageous and you have to rely on that thin uh, rope that holds on to you and so, yeah, I know what it means to, to climb. I really like that. And, uh, and they say, you know, yeah, it would be nice to take it one more step and maybe go climbing outdoors. And I go, yeah, I kind of prefer, you know, the outdoor climbing. It's really nice to be outside. And they go, oh, yeah, you have any, you know, tips where you have been? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I have. I've been you know, a bit, a bit in, in Norway and um, in the Alps. And, and they go, oh, wow. I mean, you know, Norway, that's serious climbing. So, yeah, you know, in any steep stuff or high stuff, and the more I try and hide, I mean, the more curious they become. And eventually, like, I mean, come on, tell me what you've been doing. It's not like you climb the highest one, right? And I'm like, well, actually, I have. <laughs> and they turn pale <laughs> immediately, and you can just see in their head what goes around when they think, she doesn't look that strong. She doesn't look that muscular, and look at her nails, they're pretty well <laughs> manicured. And they, you know, they just excuse themselves and go back to their friends. And at that moment, I kind of wish that I did have my suit, uh, but not so much for my own protection, but rather for theirs. Thank you. <laughs>